Hello, this is Domenico with Easynomics, and we're going to look at calculating the effects of price ceilings on stakeholders and welfare. On an exam, they would give you the graph that you'd be working with, with specific values on your X and Y axis. Um, I'm just using these uh, values of P1, P2, P3, P4, P5. Q1, Q2, Q3 on the quantity side, uh, just to get give you the idea of what to look for and what to and how to calculate, basically the surface areas of triangles, rectangles, and a trapezium. So first on exam, they might ask you to calculate the free market equilibrium price. So essentially, we're looking at where the supply curve equals the demand curve before the price control. Um, is um, is set by the government. So where S1 equals D1 at point A, we have a free market equilibrium price at P3. So whatever that value is, you would state. So price or the free market equilibrium price would be equal to P3. Where S1 equals D1 or where quantity supply equals quantity demanded, again at point A, you would state the quantity, whatever value um, on your graph for Q2. So that would be equal to Q2. Okay, simple enough. In addition, they might also ask you to state um, what is the level of consumer spending and also the total revenue. So let's take a look at that. All right. Third could be looking at consumer expenditure, All right, which is another word for saying spending. And spending is basically the price that consumers are spending a particular good or service multiplied by the quantity of the, that they're consuming. And we basically see it's a uh, price of P3 multiplied by a quantity of Q2. So in the free market, consumers are spending a price of P3 multiplied by the quantity being consumed, Q2. And again, uh, you want to be aware of what are the units on the quantity side. Are we talking about thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands? Make sure that you take that into consideration when calculating your answer, All right? So consumer spending is the price multiplied by the quantity consumed. They can also ask you uh, on the producer side, what is the total revenue, right, received by firms, All right? Which in this case, again, works out to the price of P3 multiplied by the number of units produced and sold, P3 times Q2. Right? And you can see that they're the same, but later we'll see that when we look at taxes and subsidies, consumer spending may differ from total revenue received by the producer. So just to clarify, we're calculating the surface area of this particular rectangle, okay? Just so that's clear. All right? Base times height, base times height. Perfect. What else could be, you could be asked to calculate? Um, we can also ask you about the consumer and producer surplus. So let's make a, a few notes about that. Point number five, how about calculating consumer surplus? All right, that in this case is area equal to areas A plus B plus C. Consumer surplus is what consumers are willing and able to spend versus what they actually spend, which is the free market price of P3 um, and the surface area between these two lines, the demand curve and the price that consumers actually pay in the free market. So it's equal to areas A plus B plus C, which is also equal to the height in this case, the value of P5 minus P3, I'm calculating this, times the base, which is Q2 minus zero, divided by two, because we're calculating a, initially a rectangle and then we cut it in half to get the surface area of this triangle. How about the producer surplus? Producer surplus is equal to areas D plus E plus F. 
D plus E plus F, which would again be equal to the, um, the height multiplied by the base divided by two. So the height here is P3 minus P1. That's the height here, the value of P3 minus P1 times the base, which is Q2 minus zero. And all of that divided by two, all right? So we are calculating this triangle here initially for the producer surplus and for the consumer surplus, we're calculating this triangle. All right, and that's what we've done here. How about social surplus? That would be the sum of these two areas. So the last point here, social surplus. This is equal to the sum of consumer surplus plus the producer surplus. Okay, the sum of these two, which is equal to the areas A, B, C, D, E, F. A plus B plus C plus D plus E plus F. And that would be equal to the height times the base divided by two. So in that case, it's the value of P5 minus P1, that's the distance or the height, multiplied by the base, which is Q2 minus zero, and all of that divided by two. And if we've done that, then we have calculated the surface area of this triangle. All right, perfect. So then on the exam, after you've made those calculations, they may ask you to calculate a few others based on the impact of a price ceiling. So now we're taking into account the impact of a price ceiling. The price ceiling has been set by the government that's a form of government intervention. And the price ceiling here we see is set at P2. So the price ceiling is set at P2, which creates that perfectly elastic line. With the price ceiling, we know that the quantity demanded increases along the demand curve from point A to point B, from Q2 to Q3, and the quantity supply decreases along the supply curve from point A to C, or from Q2 to Q1, okay? So first they might ask you to calculate what is the uh, quantity demanded, or what is the, the shortage or surplus that's been generated. So first we'll take into account that quantity demanded has changed at P2, and quantity demanded is now equal to the value of Q3. And we also may be asked to take into consideration the impact of quantity supply. And we see the quantity supply has decreased to a value of Q1. And we might be asked to state um, what has happened to quantity. Has there been a surplus or shortage generated? So we can see that since quantity demanded at Q3 is greater than the quantity supply at Q1, since quantity demand is greater than the quantity supply, there is excess demand. The price ceiling has generated excess demand, leading to a shortage. All right, so uh, this price control has caused disequilibrium. Supply is not equal to demand. Quantity supply is not equal to quantity demand. In this case, quantity demand is greater than quantity supply. So they might ask you to state what is the level of excess demand. Right, by how much is there too much demand? So we would take the value of Q3 minus Q1. So Q3 minus Q1 would give us the quantity of excess demand. And again, we must take into consideration the, the units. Are we talking about thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands? Make sure you incorporate that into your answer. Right? What is the level of consumer 
expenditure. And that would be equal to what consumers are paying multiplied by the quantity that they are consuming. Right? And we're looking at the binding price ceiling. We're looking at the legal market. And the new price is set at P2. Consumers are spending price of P2 multiplied how much is being consumed legally. Right? They're only consuming at Q1. Yes, there's lots of demand, but since they're facing a shortage, they're not consuming whatever that particular good or service is. So only these consumers here along section one, as we described this in the previous video, are able to consume. So it's P2 times Q1 is the level of consumer expenditure. How about total revenue, right? It works out to the same. For the producers, total revenue is equal to um, the price that they're um, charging. And since legally they can't charge more than P2, it's P2 times the quantity that they're supplying into the market. So it's um, Q1. So again, we see here that consumer spending and total revenue are the same. But later when we get to taxes and uh, subsidies, we'll see that uh, these will be, they will differ from each other. Okay. So again, with consumer expenditure and total revenue, we're looking at the surface area of this rectangle. Perfect. What else can we be asked to calculate? We can also uh, start taking a look at consumer and producer surplus. Okay. Consumer surplus for those who are able to consume at the uh, legal price ceiling price of P2. So consumer surplus now is areas A, B, and D in the legal market. A plus B plus D. All right. We're looking at these consumers here. These lucky ones are getting that particular good or service at the price ceiling price. They're, they're not facing the shortage as these consumers in section two and section three, as we talked about in the previous video, are facing. So what is the surface area? of this trapezium. A trapezium can be calculated by summing its two parallel sides, multiplied by its base, and dividing it by two. So that would be, in this case, P5 minus P2, the value of P5 minus P2, plus its additional parallel side of P4 minus P2, okay? All of that times its base, and its base is right here, Q1 minus zero, Q1 minus zero, and all of this divide by two, okay? And we'll put this here all in, brackets, okay? So the sum of its two parallel sides, P5 minus P2 plus P4 minus P2 multiplied by its base, in this case, Q1 minus zero, and all of that divided by two, and that would give us the surface area of this shape, okay? How about the producer surplus at the binding price ceiling price? So we're looking at this surface area here, this reduced producer surplus, area F. So producer surplus now has changed. It has diminished compared to where it was in the free market. It's now equal to area F. And that would be equal to the height multiplied by the base divided by two. So in this case, it is P2 minus P1 the values of those, right, multiplied by the base, Q1 minus zero, and all of that divided by two, and that would give us this triangle, right? The height multiplied by the base, divided by two, would give us that, all right? Perfect. If they asked you to calculate social surplus, then it would be the area 
of consumer surplus plus the producer surplus. What about welfare loss? The welfare loss area. Welfare loss is area C plus E. And this is a triangle again. So we're calculating this triangle. And again, we can use the height multiplied by the base, divide by two, All right? So the height here is P4 minus P2, value of that, multiplied by its base, which we see here, Q2 minus Q1, and all of that divided by two would give us this triangle. All right. So we have made the calculations that would be expected of you on an exam. And you have this video to review each of those calculations. In addition, on a paper exam, they would ask you to calculate or state the change. What would the change be in consumer surplus before and after the price ceiling? What is the change or the difference in producer surplus before and after the price ceiling. So you would be using your data that you've calculated to state what is the difference or the change uh, in addition um, to your exam. So hopefully um, that's helpful to you. And uh, in the information section, I will provide more information about this. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to comment. And please for, don't forget to subscribe and to like. Thank you so much.